just get the pizza. Get the pizza. Uh, Chisholm, just uh, the speak we've heard a lot last week talking about just the healthy competition within the squad, uh, but also the fact that players have to fight for their positions. Um, how do you feel about the competition that you have on the outside backs and how do you feel about the competition? Is it, do you feel it the same way he views it? No, I definitely see it the, the same way that I see or coach sees it. Um, I think it's healthy for everyone in the group because it pushes you to even step up uh, a little bit more. And the nice thing about it is it doesn't matter who plays on the weekend. Um, we want that player to be confident and we boost him uh, throughout the weekend. Vice versa, if you're not playing, we, we try and learn from each other. I think there's no egos, which is the most important thing. And whoever gets that opportunity to wear that green and gold jersey is, is more than willing to do a good job. For an experienced side that Racine selected, Chesman, you were obviously part of that, that sad that defeat, that 13 8 defeat um, at Stade of France. Chesman, if you look back at that match, what, what in your opinion what were your shortcomings and how do you think things will be different this, different this time around at Loftus Town and Home Grounds? Yeah, I think as Andre mentioned, we were in clinical at, at times to to take our opportunities, um, and at this level, whatever opportunities there are, you have to capitalize and, and make the most out of it. Um, but I think looking back at that position we were in, I think there's a lot of learnings, and uh, also brought us back down to earth um, during the World Cup. But that's done. Uh, our focus is far away from that. Um, obviously, two big tests against Ireland, um, which is our main focus, and. Yeah, we can still learn from the mistakes we did um, in that match um, in the World Cup and, and just build up from there. But yeah, it's a new team um, and a lot of exciting guys that's getting opportunities. So yeah, we have to be clinical. We have to bring out our, our personal um, bit of experience and X Factor and just enjoy this occasion. It is a massive one uh, and one that we owe to ourselves. Because you've been training out of this now for the past few days that we've been allowed to uh, capture some of the training sessions, does, I ask with last this question as well, does altitude, is that an, an issue for you guys as players, especially as backs, where has to run around uh, a lot, quite a lot in these matches? <laughs> I think coming from Japan, coming back to, to Pretoria, especially at altitude, it does uh, take some time to get used to, but I think we have, as you mentioned, we were here for a few weeks, so it definitely helped and benefit the group. Um, but you know, you can't be, you can't um, just bank on that, that it's gonna come to the best of your your ability as a team. Um, they probably training as hard as well, so we need to make sure that um, we, we just implement what we've trained throughout the week and try and push and, 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 and push ourselves to the highest that we can. Chesan, um, you struggle with a bit of an ego. How's that at the moment? Have you been sorted? No, confident 100%. Uh, I've been working hard uh, with the conditioning team, uh, physio. So, yeah, definitely confident and just happy to be back in the group as well. Cheslin, um Andre just talked about Tony's Brown, uh, Tony Brown's uh, attitude to attacking spaces and everything. And you would spring off back three, he's known for attack, attack, attacking spaces and everything. Do you think he's, he's going to have a major influence of what you've done to where he wants you to go? Yeah, as Andre said, I also won't give away too much. But yeah, just the way he sees the game, the way he thinks about the game. And yeah, it's exciting for, for us as a group and especially the outside backs with the plans and the vision that he has for, for the group. Um, so yeah, um, we just need to make sure that we do what we've trained throughout the week. And yeah, whenever there's that opportunities for us on the outside is just to capitalize on that and, and make sure that we keep going forward. Do you think you're going to get to a point where you're going to convince Mark Azzoli to also get a scrum cap? Do you have to have a scrum cap? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I'll be able to convince him. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, um, he's, he's, he's experienced. He's, yeah, he's a special player. I don't think he'll get that right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> to both of you guys, your role in the stream box is also now changing. Uh, you would be considered more the veterans of the side. And you've got to, in the next four years, you have to start blooding the newer players, introducing them to the culture of Springbok rugby and how to to go about that business of being a, a national player. In your opinion, what is the key um, things that make a Springbok and how do you instill that belief and confidence into the newer players? Um, <laughs> like, a, yeah, for me, it's quite simple. Um, there's so many players that's achieved quite a lot uh, throughout the rugby career and the most important thing is once his egos, everybody is going to become about themselves and 
that's the beauty of this team and, and the coaching staff is they they found the right people, they found the, the players that just wants to play rugby and, and do that jersey proud and, and not walk around thinking that they 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 the, the man uh, and they achieved everything. It's about giving back um, and also learning from, from the new guys, as I said earlier. So, um, yeah, I don't, there's been so many players in the past that achieved a lot and we just want to continue to, to do the jersey proud and make the ex-players proud as well. Uh, guys, we've got about three minutes left for English questions and then we'll move to the cards. All right, children, just uh, thought around Irish fans at the moment to be very loud in the stands and all that. Does that somewhat motivate you guys a bit more or is it a bit distracting for you? No, no, they know how to get together and bring a vibe and an atmosphere. But yeah, we're in South Africa and I'm sure the South Africans are going to come out with a big atmosphere, a lot of energy. So yeah, it's for us, once you step on that field, like you just literally block out everything that's on the outside and just focus um, on the game. Just, just as a follow-up to my colleague's question, um, one of the points that, that, that Rassi stressed yesterday was, like Andrew also said, it wasn't so much the disappointment of what happened on the field, but he was, as a coach, he says, the disappointment was the fact that there were so many Irish supporters there, and he was thinking about some Africans that had to go to pubs, they had to go to um, rugby stadiums, fan box to watch the match, and couldn't witness what you guys were doing first. And with you guys coming home now on home, so playing in front of possibly 52,000 fans, does that make the task easier for you guys against this Irish side? <laughs> That doesn't make it easy, uh, to be honest. Yes, it's, it's fantastic to have uh, our supporters, uh, people that don't have that privilege to travel all over the world to support us. And having them back in South Africa um, will be amazing. And yeah, we do definitely get a bit of boost from our supporters because they're the ones that back us and support us through the, the good and the bad times. And for us, it's just to, to make ourselves proud, to skill proud and, and do them proud as well.